Now, I want to take a moment to consider why this recognition of the natural human desire for God has led the church, as mentioned in paragraph 28 of the Catechism, to refer to man as a religious being. Interestingly, when you take a moment to think about it, it becomes quite clear that this natural desire we have for God, which seems to be structurally built into our shared human nature, is what separates us from the rest of creation. Not only are we social or political animals, like many other creatures of the world who operate merely on a horizontal plane, but we are also spiritual or religious beings who can hear and adhere to the call of God. As we'll see in a later lesson of this course, this is what the church is getting at when speaking of man's capacity for God. That there is something intrinsic to how we are built as human beings, made in the image and likeness of God, that makes us structurally open to Him. And as paragraph 28 points out, evidence of this is found in the universal human quest for God. We don't find only some human beings acting religiously in one part of history or in one culture, but rather we see the religious nature of man expressed in every era and in every culture. Even today, in a world that has become vastly secular and seemingly irreligious, we see humanity acting religious. Though one may rightly call it a secular religiosity, we can't mistake idolatry for irreligion. Just because the majority of the Western world has rejected Christianity and the God of Revelation does not mean it has entirely annihilated the spiritual or religious faculty that is intrinsic to our human nature. Instead, as the Western world has clearly opted for consumerism over traditional religious practice, it seems that instead of totally removing our need to worship, which some may claim is one of the goals of secularism, we have only shifted our object of worship from the Creator to creatures. And this actually brings us to paragraph 29, where the Catechism reminds us that this inherent bond we have with God in our nature really can be and often is forgotten, overlooked, or even explicitly rejected by man.